Hello and welcome to Streets of Gotham, an ongoing Blades in the Dark game following a crew of Gotham City rogues. We're playing a simplified version of Blades in the Dark with a special Gotham City playset. I'm your game master and producer, David, he, him. I'm a graphic designer, an illustrator, and a game designer. You can check out my tabletop RPGs over at dbb-8.itch.io. I'm also on Instagram, uh, Mastodon, Hive, at Brunel Brutman. Uh, that's where I am on all the socials. Uh, and welcome to season two. We have such a cool season plan for you. Super excited to get started. Let's go around and introduce our cast. We have uh, some, some returning faces uh, and some new ones, and I could not be more excited to have them all introduce themselves. Hey y'all, uh, I'm Marcy, AKA Experimental Madness, which is the username you can find me most places around the internet, except for, you know, a few of the sites that won't let me use it for whatever reason. And if that's the case, you can find me there under the username Marciful. I'm a writer and editor by day and by night. I play awesome characters with awesome people and I am so happy to be back in my element <laughs> uh, for season two, uh, returning to play Jackie Ripley, uh, your friendly neighborhood hit woman, question mark. Uh, yeah, you know, stuff, things. It's been uh, a normal one. Uh, I also play the Hunter playbook for those that maybe have not joined us before. What's up, everybody? I'm Hopper. Um, I am a professional arborist and professional game master based out of Brooklyn, New York. Um, I don't know. I do all sorts of dumb fuck shit. Uh, you can follow me uh, follow me and the wild bullshit I do under the legend tree in most places. And if you want bad hot takes and questionable opinions, you can follow me under fail deadly. That is with a three instead of an E because I'm a bad person. Uh, my pronouns are they, them, as are those of my character. Uh, um, I am playing Ollie, Molly Ender, um, uh, who is using the Ace playbook and is a getaway driver and fine, real, real good. It's this is this is fine. Everything's fine. I'm gonna bye. I'm back. Um... Hey everybody, I'm Maddie. Um, I use they them pronouns and I'm a graphic novelist, illustrator, and games enthusiast in real life Gotham slash Brooklyn Gotham adjacent. Um, you can find my art at Cellar Tater on Instagram or check out my website maddiecourtney.com. That's M-A-T-T-I-E. Courtney with a C. I don't know. The pharmacy always gets it messed up. They're like K. I'm like I don't know. I guess I guess people use K. I don't know. Or you can just check out the character portraits for this game because I did those. Um, tonight I will be playing Ed, who uses he/him pronouns. Um, Ed is a middle-aged ex-riddler goon just trying to fix his mistakes and do right by his kids. Surrogate and actual with mixed success, and he uses the engineer playbook. Hey everybody, my name is Andre. I use he, they pronouns. Uh, you can find me at Andre Vera Art on Instagram and Twitter, or I should get better at posting, but sometimes I do post. Uh, you can also find me at my uh, professional portfolio website, andrevera.art, where you can see my illustration portfolio, as well as a number of the actual play series that I'm in, including uh, The Atomless, Tragedy of Theologian, Redline, Unicorn Hunt, all that good stuff, and Streets of Gotham season two. Uh, and I will be playing uh, Adam, uh, who uses he, they pronouns, and, or he, him pronouns, um, and uh, is a current Riddler uh, employee. All right, and we are going to find out more about that immediately as we jump oh, in. Oh, cool. Right now. Right now. Yes, Let's new stuff, it. new stuff. <laughs> oh the whole Adam West stone trail. We're right normal. Now. <laughs> We're normal about this. We're so neurotypical tonight. All right. We open, of course, on Gotham City. Um, it's daytime. It's a, a thin, 
cold January day, overcast. We, we have this, this sort of grayish light washing over the facades of the skyscrapers of Gotham. And below we can see the city bustling and steaming uh, under this, this overcast January sky. Everyone down there striving for something. It's a new year, but for a lot of us, the same struggles. And we are going to start with Adam Jimenez, a.k.a. dot dot dot. So, Adam. Yes. Where in Gotham did you volunteer to plant a Riddler puzzle cube for your boss today? I I knew this question was coming up, so I literally searched up a map of Gotham. Um, I'm going to say oh, Adam is currently in the Gotham Zoo in Amusement Mile. <laughs> Tremendous. Cool. So um, let's let's zoom in on that. So uh, you you volunteered to go out and plant uh, plant this cube at the Gotham Zoo. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a specific exhibit that you're planting it on? Is there a specific area of the zoo? I think Adam has, uh, or dot 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 has specifically uh, gone to the primate house and uh, is trying to place the cube in a very usually difficult to reach location. Oh, that, I have a great that, idea. That that requires utilizing the actual like enclosure and the different like enrichment items inside in order to obtain the Ooh, okay. uh, yeah. Cool, cool. Okay, so you're you're actually trying to get it into one into of the, the enclosure. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Um all right. I got I got an idea. Okay. Um so we see uh we see the gorilla enclosure um in the uh in the the primate house uh at the uh, at the Gotham Zoo here. And being Gotham, this is a very like the at least the bones of this zoo are very old fashioned. So we we see this um this uh sort of uh imposing ornate stone building, right? Um and uh it is it is of course decorated with uh sculptures of various primates around the top. Uh, you know, very Beaux Arts, uh, big stone archways, and the gorilla area, um, I think, is uh, a, a sort of new uh, addition to the side. It's kind of it kind of juts out of the back of the building, and there's sort of a um, one of those like fenced in areas um, with uh, with uh, you know like a wall and like a trench. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and the the gorillas can freely go in or out. Right. There, there's sort of an indoor part of the exhibit and an outdoor part of the exhibit. Um, right now, it being January, uh, the gorillas, uh, I think, are not uh, immediately present uh, as they have they have chosen the warmer climes of indoors. Um, who do we see uh, approaching the primate house here? Let's get a physical description of Adam. So uh, you see a lanky, slim, athletic built uh, Hispanic man um, wearing very baggy, multi-pocketed cargo shorts. Um, it seems it's almost to the point of like 
parachute pants almost of like there is the waist and then everything just like billows underneath um there on the belt um there is uh loads of carabiners um and it's not like a notched belt it's more of a belt that just had like you just loop back in on itself to so that it can stay flexible um uh just above that is a uh i forgot the word um it's like a a restraint that goes around the back and then circles back towards the front um Report to use for a girder thank you um for uh for repelling uh which goes over a tank top uh the cargo pants and the uh overlaid um uh button up t-shirt are both like this same kind of olivey sand green um and uh there is a sling bag across the right shoulder the um the figure is also wearing a purple beanie with a green question mark on it. Uh, currently has uh, giant ski goggles on and a uh, and a respirator covering his mouth, um, as well as uh, two fingerless gloves. Do you have any sort of coat? It is. Uh... I'm going to say it it's, it's probably in, like, the 30s, 40s. It is a little chilly. Uh, I'm going to say uh, it's it's nothing more than, like, athleisure wear, just because um, Adam is doing, or, or dot, 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 is actively doing a lot of, um, like, physical activity, so it's not a lot of time to, like, stay still and continue to be cold. Also, it's a lot of... He's pretty young, right? Uh, yeah, uh, dot 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 is, uh, as of today, 20 years old. I have never seen a circa teenage yeah, yeah. Uh, boy wearing a coat when they absolutely 100% should no. be. No. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I asked a mom oh, no, question. <laughs> Look at you already getting that dad are, energy. Are you <laughs> wearing a coat? Did you, it, it's cold, it's January, it's cold out. It's um, you, you pack outside. your thermos? <laughs> Take a sandwich. <laughs> so cool. So that's who we see. Uh, that's who we see. Sort of, uh, sort of, sort of eyeing the gorilla enclosure uh, yes. out behind the the primate house here at the Gotham Zoo. So uh, dot dot dot. Your boss, the Riddler, yes. has uh, been having his hench people hide puzzle cubes all around um the uh all around amusement mile um in preparation for of course his next face off with batman um the uh this is the last one this is you you know there there's this last cube that is is supposed to be the last one that Batman finds um, and has the final piece of, of the puzzle that will unlock Riddler's plan here. Um, you have been asked to take this last puzzle cube and place it in the hand of a gorilla statue that is perched on the outside of the primate house overlooking the gorilla enclosure. What's Beautiful. your method here? How are you approaching this? And how are you getting into that space? Okay. So you said this is like a like an old style zoo, like brick built, like very like Bronx Zoo style, right? Yeah. So in in the way of the Bronx Zoo, it's very much an old style zoo at the core of it, but has been upgraded over the years with more sort of modern exhibits. So like the outdoor area of the gorilla enclosure is very much a you know a, a more modern zoo, right? Uh, there's there's a good amount of space. 
you know, there's like a tree in there uh, with a, a tire swing on it. There's probably, you know, a, a couple of miscellaneous like en enrichment objects strewn around uh, there. But then the um, where it opens into the indoor viewing area, um, that's more of like this really old school building. Gotcha. Um, and the, the statue is on top of the viewing area building or on the outside? On top of the viewing area building. On top of the viewing area. Yeah, so it, it sort of overlooks this enclosure that has been built out from the side of the building. Okay. So uh, Adam, it, or dot, 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 is going to, uh, in a very Tarzan-like manner, um, going to... Uh, climb up a lamppost, jump to uh, a nearby tree branch that has been like a little bit like cropped away from like a viewing, like like a, from the pathway. Try and climb up that, and then uh, uh, use um, a little bit of uh, climbing gear to get on top of that building. Perfect. All Oops. right, so. Time for our first action roll. Um, this could go. Uh, this could go a couple of ways. I think, mm -hmm. um, depending on what what you would like to argue to me. Just just a, a general rem reminder to players and audience alike. Um, in um, Blades in the Dark, in Forged in the Dark games, um, actions are player directed. So you know, I'll recommend something. Um, usually as, and that's, that's what I've been doing, but players get the final say over what action they are, they are selecting for, uh, to, to roll on, um, as long as it like actually, you know, tracks with the action that they're taking in the game. So I, uh, my, my sort of recommended actions here, the ones that I would, uh, I would consider valid are, um, you're either maneuvering your way up that light pole and uh, and and across right mm -hmm. um or keep in mind it is um i think it's it's you know it's the middle of the, it's daytime it's the middle of the day but i think it's somewhat earlier so it's it's around like i would say 10 or 11 um so, is, so the zoo is fully open the zoo is open okay. but uh the zoo is open but it's early in the day and it's January. So and it's there's, January. That's there's right. not yeah. a ton of people around here. The zoo is relatively free of people like in getting in and walking over to this part of the zoo, you know, you, you've probably encountered like a dozen folks. Um, you know, some of them are, are zoo staff and employees. Some of them are, uh, are a couple of early visitors, but you know, the, the zoo isn't really going to get many visitors today at all. And uh, certainly, uh, certainly this is on the earlier side for when people would be showing up. However, you may be skulking uh, out of view of the few people who are there. Because uh, there is a chance that you could get spotted by somebody who's just walking around the zoo. So, what are you feeling? Maneuver? Skulk? Do we have I think maneuver is the way to go. I think that this is a fairly athletic feat. Um, and that uh, at, dot 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 is not necessarily attempting to be particularly sneaky. Just try like knowing that this is going to be, you know, it's, it's a decent challenge to, you know, get from the public walkway to on top of the building. Yeah. Um, but sort of Assassin's that, Creed style, if you do it fast Assassin's enough, yeah. even if it's the middle of the day, maybe nobody will notice. Yeah, totally. All right. um, so, awesome. So roll. you are rolling with your maneuver rating, uh, and that is your dots across in maneuver. Yes. Uh, you are, of course, starting with um, the the number of dice equal to the number of dots that you've got in your row for that action. Mm -hmm. um, you are uh, certainly uh, not at any sort of level disadvantage. Uh, you, uh, like the rest of the crew, are level one. 
Um, so uh, that's clear. You don't have any harm marked. Not losing any dice for that. Um, and I don't think this yet counts as a desperate situation. Not yet. Um, extra dice. You can, uh, again, you don't have a level on your target, which is just a lamppost. Um, <laughs> we're flat there. Uh, however, you are always welcome to push yourself or take a devil's bargain. I think I'm good. All right. Roll them up. Okay. Not have a level on on a lamppost. I feel like I have a. I feel like I, real life Hopper, has a level on a lamppost. Climbing a lamppost can be tricky, and especially this is also January where People they can get from real Philadelphia slick. do it all the time. That is true. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, I got a four and a five. Okay, cool. Mixed success. Yeah. Mixed success. All right. So uh, highest one is five. Mixed success. Um. All right. So I will, I'll give you a choice. Um, <laughs> again, going back to Skulker Maneuver here. So either, uh, so you're gonna get, you're gonna get up the lamppost, you're gonna get across. Um, you will either um, get spotted um, or you will get over there, but you're gonna lose your footing. Ooh. I like the footing idea. Yeah. Yeah. I lose my footing. Okay, cool. Um, also, uh, another feature of the game that I will that I will highlight is um, so what I what I'm gonna say now is um, dot dot dot. You uh, you do as as you've described. So, you know, you you do a quick look left, quick look right, nobody's in the immediate area, you shimmy up that. Uh, up that lamp post, um, and then are you like trying to string a line across to the building, then, and get over, or are you? Is it more of a jump situation? Uh, trying to string a line. Okay. From, uh, I'm still currently on the lamp post. Yeah. So you can get to you know you get to the top of the lamp post, uh, and uh, and you do you have like you have like a grappling line that yeah you're like a grappling hook yeah okay. yeah so you get up to the top of the lamppost you know we kind of see you hanging off the side um perhaps mirroring uh one of the hanging chimpanzees on the side of the building a little bit uh mm -hmm. as you whip your grappling hook across it catches uh on one of the elaborate sculptures on the top of this building um which is higher than the lamppost so you have a line going upwards now um, and then you grab onto the line, test it, feels good, and you start climbing up. Um, as you reach out your hand to grab onto the piece of stonework um, next to where the grappling hook is, you hear uh, a bit of a crunch, uh, and you see the hook actually pulling this stonework out of the wall under your weight. Uh, and you're going to watch that stone crumble away uh, as you have one hand on uh, on the stonework uh, and you you completely lose your traction on the on the line uh, as it goes swinging down onto the ground uh, and thunks into, uh, I think the dirt off to the side of the walkway below you. So you're now hanging on to the building with one hand. I, I would say uh, th this is a, a somewhat tall structure. Um, so the ground is probably about three standard stories below you now that you've gotten all the way to the roof. What's your next move? How are you getting out of this one? I think... Um... Adam, sorry, dot, dot, dot. I'm going to say dot, dot, dot for the first time, eventually. Uh, is going to use an ability of his called Keen Eye. Okay. Which, uh, is when you successfully study something, you are able to notice otherwise impossible to detect details. Cool. Yes. Awesome. 
So I'm going to roll study and see what I get. All right. And I got a six. All right, six. What are you studying? I am studying in the same way that a rock climber looks for a hold, looking for another part of the sculpture or of this ledge to uh, like swing up and then latch my foot around. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so with a six, you can absolutely find that. You know, we we like zoom into your vision. Uh, we see the dots connecting. We sort of see the uh, the area where you are highlighted, and then the the connections drawn out to it in a, uh, in, a in a bit of a web, right? Uh, and we we hit all of the areas that are likely to break. No, 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 no. Yes, ding right there. Uh, and you find a, uh, you see if you just swing yourself a little bit as the piece that you're holding crumbles off, you should have just enough momentum to grab on with one hand, put your foot on uh, the ledge with the other, and you'll be good. Okay, and that cool, is cool, exactly cool. what you do. We're gonna roll yes. that success forward. So, uh, you... R.I.P. that lemur sculpture. Yeah. So sorry. Uh, so this, this other, this lemur head, uh, crumbles off as you shift yourself over, uh, sort of grab onto the side, and now you're sort of, like, wrapped around the corner of the building, uh, with your, uh, with one foot and then the other on this ledge that sort of circles the, uh, the entire roof, uh, and you know, you look down as this lemur head just shatters uh, into Ooh. into a million pieces on the pavement below you. Um, you see, you can see off in the distance a uh, a zoo employee kind of like uh, briefly turn their turn their head yeah, with a sort of like what was that kind of a uh, kind of emotion, Alert. but. They, they don't seem to have spotted you, uh, and they, they move off. All right. So I hate to see are... beautiful artwork destroyed, though. That's, that's always sad. Yeah. Well, this is what we give up uh, when we choose a life of crime, and yeah. that's the real uh, lesson of Streets of Gotham, kids. <laughs> so, yeah. Adam, you are... I thought the are... life of crime was the friends we made along <laughs> That that is actually the real lesson of Streets of Gotham. That's actually the lesson. <laughs> yeah. Um All right. So so Adam dot 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 yeah. you are now starting to uh, to make your way along the around the corner and along the side of this ledge um, towards the uh, the gorilla sculpture which is it's just like smack dab in the middle of the roof, equidistant from either edge, right directly over the gorilla enclosure. And that is when you get a phone call. You, uh, you pick it up. Uh, well, I mean, do you pick it up? Uh, uh, Adam takes a second to be like, what the fuck? And then we'll like, check one pocket, it's not in there. Checks another pocket. <laughs> goes through like all the way down the pants and then it's in like the last pocket near his ankle for some reason is the well, ringer on uh it's on uh it, it's on uh audio only no vibrate um, what, what's the sound uh well it depends who's calling so i'm gonna check who's calling it's your boss oh great um it is definitely like um like a vibraphone chime <laughs> Great, love it. Uh, we'll answer. Okay, so you uh, you pick up the phone and you hear your boss, the Riddler. How are we doing, uh, Mr. Brait? Uh, I am literally about to place this last cube, right? And then like uh, Adam is like right behind the gorilla. Uh, it's like a like a silverback and has like the the downward like proud upward knuckle stance. Yeah, uh, and just hides it between like the kind of cusped uh, fingers. Great. Uh, right now, all done, boss. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. 
Yep. That's that's it. How much trouble do you think the bat is going to have finding this one? Well, I think we've tried to keep it all connected, but not obvious. So hopefully it'll take him at least a few hours to go through the whole gamut. Good, that's what I'm hoping. The longer we keep him distracted, the better this plan goes. That's my hope too, boss. All right, uh, I'm gonna need you back here uh, ASAP. So uh, do whatever else it is you need to get done out in the city and then uh, come see me. It'll just be a direct flight charter to you, boss. All right. Thanks, Mr. Brake. Talk to you soon. See you soon. Like, uh, dot, 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 just like curls his fingers. <laughs> okay. Whatever. It's not important. It'll happen. It'll happen. Oh, goodness. Oh, um, the Riddler. The um, worst. He's the worst. Activates my fighter fight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, um, I guess that, that, that's got to get down, huh? Yeah, so, uh, what's your exit strategy? Let's think, let's think. On top of the building, overlooking the enclosure. Oh, before I go, um, Adam pulls out, uh, the sling bag, grabs a little spray paint. Yep, I was gonna ask. Uncaps it, shakes that little baby up, and then tags uh, the uh, the side of the gorilla. Are you sure you don't want to tag the butt? Oh, that's what I assumed. It was it was, it was gonna be the the booty. Okay, yes. great. Tag that um, ass. Just tag that. Ass. Damn it. God damn it. This gorilla ass is mine. Great. Clip What's that. uh? <laughs> no. <laughs> give us a give us a a brief description of uh, dot dot dots dot dot dots tag. Uh, it's actually right there. I don't know if it's going to show up in the video, but uh, it's uh three vertical parallel lines with uh three dots in the middle. A sort of uh, side, like um, a parabola, skewed ninety degrees uh, counterclockwise. A backwards uh, with, S, uh, sort of. Kind of a backwards S. Um, a cool and then the, S. A, like a cool little gra graffiti style. No, um, but and, and then. And then, so it has the, the parabola on the top and on the bottom, it has a more of like a cane sort of shape where it's a straight line across and then just a little curve at, at, the, at the right side. And then when you look at it, you read it top to bottom, left to right, dot, dot, dot. Perfect. All right, so yeah, uh, how are you getting out of here? All right, let's see. Uh, not feeling so great about the grappling hook right now. Not that that's going to help me get down, but maybe stay away from ropes for a little bit. I think Adam is just going to break it off a tree. Just, just hop down. Um, and just climb, like. Okay, if you if you go onto the tree, you're going into the gorilla enclosure, so you're away. Oh, it's in the enclosure. Oh, yes. well, that's not useful at all. I, I mean, you can. Out. Like, I, you're you're That'd welcome to sick. do so. Uh, no, we gotta go see the boss. Um. Uh, yeah, definitely is going to. I think in that case, just go down. Um, on the side, like kind of on that same corner where the lemur head was, is just like it, almost like a um, a column that's shaped like a palm tree. Yes, for sure. Uh, and has that same ribbing, and I think it's just gonna scale down. Great. All right, uh, let's uh, let's have one more roll here. Are you maneuvering your way down or skulking your way down? 
I think I'm going to maneuver again. I, I don't think the lemur head was enough to rattle uh, dot, dot, dot enough to um, be more cautious this time. I think it's just m more active, the uh, same as it was before. Got it. Got it. Uh, that's a four. Okay, another mixed success. Nice. Um, so uh, this time, this time I'm... Uh, yeah, th this time I'm not going to give you the choice. Yeah. Uh, the the other option has come into play, um, and as uh, as you reach the ground, uh, you hear from behind you, uh, "Hey, what are you doing?" And Shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, just dashing, and you're ju and you're just taking off full tilt. Uh, as, uh, as this, like, uh, this, this zookeeper, uh, you know, in, in just like a heavy, uh, a heavy coat with the Gotham Zoo logo, uh, on it is just sort of standing there stunned in the doorway of the primate house, like, <laughs> like three feet from where you came down the, the thing. Uh, um, yeah. yeah. Just they like walked outside and they saw a shoe in the corner. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, totally. Uh, and you you hear you hear some shouting behind you. Uh, it seems like uh, they might be calling for security, but uh, you are running full tilt uh, out of here. You have a, a pretty uh, you have a pretty major lead on them. So I think we'll cut here uh, as uh, as dot dot dot. You just book it. Uh, towards the zoo gate, uh, and I don't think back towards your boss quite yet. I lied. I did lie. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we'll we'll check in with where you're actually going before you get back to the Riddler in a bit. But first, I would like to check in with. Ed. Ed. Since your breakout from Arkham, uh, you've been staying in Catwoman's safe house. Uh, it's a warehouse loft in a semi-deserted industrial neighborhood in Gotham. Um, we see this large, echoey, open space with brick walls, these big arched windows with that sort of um, wavy diffusing glass, you know, the kind that I mean? Like, yeah, it's it's sort of like little chips that are all kind of melted together, right? Like, that you see on industrial buildings sometimes. Um, some of these windows are, are boarded over. Um, there's some uh, industrial metal tables um, along the walls and in the center of the space. Um, a, a little kitchenette area uh, around this deep metal industrial sink. Uh, that's in one corner. We have a hose uh, running over around from the sink into a storage closet off the kitchenette. Uh, and that uh, closet very Where? conveniently has a drain. So that makes that your shower. Um, home sweet home. Yeah, home, home sweet home. Um, the uh, the other furniture in here is all you know very old sort of scavenged stuff uh, you know uh, there's some couches maybe an easy chair or two around they're all stained they're like leaking stuffing um, <laughs> there might be some scuffed dining chairs that are like they, they look like they're cobbled together from like six or seven different restaurants um, it's January again so. Uh, you know, there there might be a space heater or two running, but it's still notably cold in this space. Um, there's all kinds of HVAC duct duct work uh, running back and forth along the ceiling here, but the building furnace is off. Ed, just how I like it. Where are you in this space, <laughs> and who do we see? Give us a give us a, a description of Ed here. 
So, um, I think you actually, right now, you, <laughs> you only hear, you, or here, excuse me, you only see a shadow, and, uh, you hear the sort of click and hiss of, um, a beer bottle being open, and a voice, pretty average voice, just not high-pitched, not low-pitched, uh, emerges from the darkness, um, and Ed says, uh, watching two years of night have turned me into a nocturnal animal i must choose my targets carefully it's a big city um something gets knocked over and he says "Shit, i, I can't be everywhere they don't know where i am we have a signal now for when i'm needed um he pauses takes a big gulp of uh of guinness and he comes into the light to them here's a tool and uh you see just an average guy um dad bod high and tight haircut um probably in his early 50s um he doesn't look great there's deep dark circles under his eyes he's got this almost beard like five o'clock shadow but like grown out for three weeks um He's wearing like a what, like a white tank top. He's wearing gym shorts, and uh, he kind of leans his hand against the window and takes a deep breath and another swig of beer. And he says, "The city's eating itself." <sighs> Who am I behind the mask? And uh, Ed, you hear from behind you in the <laughs> in the dimly lit room. What are you talking about? You're not wearing a mask. Uh, don't don't we all wear masks? You know. Well, yeah, I do. And you turn around to see Catwoman standing there. Uh, of course. Uh, clad in her black leather with her cat ear mask uh, and a, a an extremely puzzled look on her face uh, and a backpack, a black backpack slung over her shoulder, which she drops uh, onto the ground. Belina, how's it going? Um, and I think a genuine smile uh, breaks across Ed's face and he like opens his arms. Um, uh, it's been, it feels like it's been forever. Yeah, it's been since yesterday. Have you been <laughs> talking to yourself the entire time I've been gone? Oh, I, you know, I, I mean, how long have you been gone? Uh, 16 no. hours. No, no, no. I, 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 I slept, I, you know, so that's like eight hours. So definitely wasn't talking to myself the whole time, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah. And Read the newspaper. She, uh, she, she sort of, she walks up and she, you know, accepts your, your hug, gives you a little, a little squeeze. Okay, here's, here's a question. Does our woman, does our version of Catwoman wear heels? Uh, or do we have a practical version of Catwoman? Hmm. I can't answer this question. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's an open I, question I for the group. I can answer this question. I can answer this question. I have an answer. Yes. She has uh, boots that can go from heel to flat. Oh, that's yes. it. Tremendous. It has to be that. Yeah, I love it. Absolutely, that's it. Yep. Like yeah, uh, they they, like they have a piece of, uh, that like flips down. Yes. Yeah. It, it's, it's, she gets shank. to decide how extra she wants to be. So yeah, there's like a shank in the boot that literally is uh, that it that uh, when she like I don't know clicks some clicks her literally when she clicks her heels yeah um, uh, uh, straightens out instead of being the 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 shank for uh, high heels and then the heel collapses as well. Right, which you know right. she could also uh, use as a weapon in a pinch. They were an anniversary gift. <laughs> <laughs> What does that oh, mean? Oh man, that's oh, canon. Man. 
Oh man. You All know right. what it means. You know what it means. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Okay. So uh <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Then uh in the in the heels she she's definitely a little bit taller than uh than Ed. Um and you know, this is this is not a long hug. She just sort of gives you a, a brief squeeze. Um and uh pulls back, uh peels her her mask off, um, and we can see her face. Uh we of course see a uh uh, uh, a youngish woman. Um, she's in her her twenties. Yeah, oh. late late twenties, early thirties, maybe. Um, uh, with a uh, a dark pixie cut, and um, she she is looking at you, Ed, with noted concern in her eyes. Uh, she says, "You're." Sure you're okay here all alone, Ed? Dad? I think (laughs) Ed tears up. I mean... Yeah. You know. You've been... Uh, I got... I'm... I'm... Don't... You don't have to worry about me. Look, I got dinner with Jackie and Javi later this week. You know, uh, so I'm I'm gonna get out of the the the, the house. <laughs> so you know, I'm 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 doing I'm doing okay. Uh, you know, try to get in touch with Izzy. I know why, Shusha, and you know, you know, the, my, the other kids too. And of course, <laughs> who wants to associate with you know? And I'll come escape me, so you know, f- you know, maybe not feeling. You gotta feeling at my best, but you gotta just give it some time, Dad. They'll come around. Yeah, I know the holidays like, were tough. You've uh, you've been pretty mopey since New Year's. Yeah, well, I don't know. Like old Frank says, give the world a couple whirls. You know, Sinatra. Is that is that what he says? That's what he says. Just, I mean, he was a piece of shit. Just, you know. Uh, I guess we have that in common. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, so where have you been? What what you been up to? Uh, well, I uh, I got mail for you. Oh, maybe that'll cheer you up. Yeah, mail. Somebody uh, sending me letters. Yeah. Postcard. Uh, and she reaches into the backpack and pulls out a uh, a postcard, uh, which she hands over to you, Ed. Um, you see a uh, on the front of the postcard a photo of the Las Vegas Strip. Uh, and it has absolutely been covered in multicolored doodles in neon marker pen. It's, it's all these like bombs and skulls and hearts and knives and smiley faces and little, little like kissy faces and winky faces, um, almost, almost obliterating the, uh, the photo. And if you flip it over, you read on the back the following. Hello from fabulous Las Vegas. Your girls are having an absolute blast out here. We're on a casino spree. It's amazing what you can get in this town with just a baseball bat and a little bit of dynamite. We've already (laughs) saved up enough for a spa getaway. (laughs) Whoops. Uh, better drop this in the mail and get back in the convertible. I think I hear sirens. <laughs> Love and kisses, XOXOXOXO, Holly and Manny. Oh, bless bless their hearts. They're having a great time. Look at this. This is love. Oh, I think 
he goes over and he takes like a a rusty he pulls a rusty nail out from the floor and he pins the postcard like up on one of the walls next to like a couple of other like things he's got like i think he's probably got like a like a partially burnt like or or crumpled picture of like each of his old pictures of each of his various families um his kids um yep. and postcards and stuff uh pinned up on the wall uh bless them they 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 deserve this they deserve this uh any, yeah, anything yeah it sounds else? like they're doing well didn't they ask you to uh keep an eye on your friends ed and and i am like i said i got listen i would never i would not dare disobey manny and and holly okay uh i, I got dinner with jackie and 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 holly and uh you know and you know we we text you know sometimes she uh doesn't respond, you know. I, I do spend a lot of time scrolling through Instagram. I send her reels all the time, um, you know. I'm not sure if she sees them, but you know. Uh, so I got dinner. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see them. I, I'm, you know. Uh, could I be doing a better job? Probably. Maybe you should go out and see them sooner rather than later. Maybe they'd want to know that Harley and Manny wrote in. Right, right, right. You know, no, you're you're right. I should uh, I should share the news. Uh, maybe I don't know. Should I? I don't know. Should I give them a a call first? Like I don't want to disturb their their bliss. Is that a? Is that? Should I, t should I just show up? Do people do that? I, I, I've been seeing some memes about boomers just showing up on people's doorsteps without calling ahead. So I, I just like, should I? Don't you're, all of you hang out at that junkyard of Ollie's? Oh yeah, yeah. No, I could go there. There's just sometimes like a lot of teens there, and uh, it makes me feel like a sad. Uh, old man to just kind of be hanging around there. I mean, I guess the... And you don't feel like a sad old man hanging around here, Ed? Okay, you know, that... Ed, that... what are you wearing? <laughs> did we did we establish this? Is Ed, like, clothed? Uh, he's, wear he's wearing a, a dirty white tank top and gym shorts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Drinking Guinness, Guinness and monologuing. <laughs> Having a normal one. Yes, yeah, Selena kind of kind of gives you a a look up and down and says, "You're not even wearing real pants." What? Gym shorts are total. They are valid. You you, you don't know. I I could be going to play basketball later. I mean, I'm not, but I could be. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. All right. You know. Okay. Point taken. You know. Uh. Uh, you know, uh, I will, I'll give her, I'll give, I'll give her a call. Uh, you, maybe I'll give Javi a call. I don't know. Did, I feel like Jackie doesn't like to receive phone calls or if, I don't know. Does, <laughs> like, I don't know. I'll give her a call. I'll call her up. I'll tell her. But all right. I gotta, let, let me see. He goes over to a pile of clothes. There's two piles. There's a dirty pile and a clean pile. Dirty pile is much, much larger. He starts like digging through the clean pile. Okay. Um. Mm, no. Okay. This. Okay. I can pull with this. Um, then he goes and he's picking out an outfit. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I think we we see Catwoman kind of sigh, uh, watching you do that. She um, unloads some stuff out of the the backpack she's she's been bringing you various supplies uh while you've been staying here so you know she unloads some uh some canned goods uh, you know maybe like a tube of toothpaste and uh, and some stuff onto one of the um one of the industrial tables 
Um, Ooh, chunky sirloin steak, uh, sirloin bur burger. That's my favorite soup. How yeah, you know? I know, because you say every single time that you want it. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's fair. That's that's fair. Oh, man, Chunky, they know how to make a good stew. Well, enjoy. I gotta get going. I'll be back tomorrow. Ed, please get out of the warehouse. Okay, uh, I, I will. I, I promise. I promise. I will. And she... Thank you. Uh, she leans in, gives you another little hug, uh, and pulls her, her mask back down. Uh, and I think we leave Ed watching... Stay out of trouble! Yeah. Say hi to the bat for me! You're calling that up as she's climbing uh, the uh, the industrial ladder out up to the, the rooftop exit. So... With that, I think we will move over to Jackie. Jackie, so hey. you have been living quietly with Harvey Dent for the past couple of months since uh, your your breakout. Um, you've been kind of rotating through various empty safe houses and bases um, from two faces gang um, that are no longer in use or not currently in use uh, as as far as you're aware um, you know uh, in in Gotham when the boss uh, gets put in prison gangs certainly do not dissolve immediately um, no. but uh, they the the ways in which they they hang on can be can be variable you know sometimes uh, they're they're taking orders from uh, the uh, from the boss in prison uh, and the, the gang is, is pretty cohesive sometimes somebody else sees it as an opportunity to uh, you know get their spot at the top takes over <laughs> sometimes uh, sometimes the gang starts to, to splinter or fracture a little bit and and kind of go in different directions uh, start to kind of get smaller areas of turf, right? Um, I think that's probably the sort of current state of Two Faces former gang. Um, you know, they're they're still out there. They're going around. They're still Two Face themed, but there's like, you know, instead of one big gang, it's like five small gangs, and they're they're all kind of small potatoes right now without uh, without Big Bad Harf. So. Um, that means that that plenty of their uh, of their location uh, of their locations because of the scaling back um, are just kind of left empty, and uh, the two of you can kind of live uh, in them. Uh, I think you're rotating about every you're moving about every two weeks, so yeah, that makes as sense. not to attract attention. You know, it's long enough that it's not like you're constantly running, but it. It's a short enough time that, you know, oh, if somebody doesn't, somebody might not notice that there's a light on somewhere where there wasn't for, for a couple of weeks. Um, you, you don't have much of anything, but you've certainly carved out kind of a nice little domestic life on the run <laughs> for yourselves. Um, and you're, you're still just kind of trying to figure out what normal is between the the two of you as you're as you're doing this so my question is um where jackie are you currently staying um where in the city what kind of space is it yeah what a great question i should have thought of that beforehand uh i think we're closer right now um not quite downtown, uh, but more in like the historic district, just the older area of cool. the city. And it's not quite the cauldron, but it's clo we're getting closer. <laughs> okay, cool. It's so, not a great area, yeah. but it's a manageable area. Okay, so you're you're in that kind of like uh, you know downtown is is built up um, for sure, but it it also has these sort of pockets of 
the, the kind of older city, right? Or um, pockets of uh, uh, of sort of like less development areas that, you know, the, the financial district or, sure. or what have you hasn't quite encroached onto yet. Areas where, yeah, it's downtown, but the tourists don't go there. Um, what kind of a what kind of a spot is this? Um, I think it's like a pre-war building. Uh, it's probably small. It's run down, but everything works, and that's really what matters. Um, I'm gonna guess it's really not much bigger than. It's probably a studio, but it's more like a one bedroom. It's got like that little bit of extra space. Cool. Um, yeah, it's it's seen some wear and tear, not just in the life of the building, but in the fact that it, what it's been used as for the last few years. Yeah, for sure. I think this was probably, um, a, a, a space that the, um, we'll say it's like, um, sort of on the, the top floor in the back, uh, of yeah. this, of this pre-war building. It's this little studio apartment. Um, and it, it's just sort of like a convenient drop spot for, um, for the gang or it was, um, uh, and so it was just sort of left as this, this just empty apartment. Um, so it is pretty early in the morning when you come back into the apartment. Yeah. How do you enter and who do we see? Let's get a description of Jackie. Uh, so just standing outside of the door to the main, the main entrance of the uh, immediate, the actual like apartment itself, not the building. Um, there's a fair, uh, a woman looks to be in her early to mid thirties, uh, average height. Um, she's got short brown hair that's shaved on one side, um, and sort of feathered over on the other. Um, she has given up doing the dye jobs for those that have been watching for a while. <laughs> it's just her regular hair now. Um, and for those that know, um, normally or like the previous uh, previous season or two, usually Jackie looks somewhere between, oh, I want to say like roadkill uh, versus like slightly healed over uh, pile of gashes and bruises. So she's doing better than that now. Um, you see a woman that actually looks like she has slept a solid uh, like eight hours most nights, like the bags under her eyes, the dark circles, they're gone. Um, any any previous bruises and gashes look like they are being taken care of. She looks like she's actually put on weight and doesn't just look like a wiry, uh, you know, like a wiry, skinny, ready to snap uh, at anything kind of woman. She has like a healthy muscle mass now. Uh, and overall, she looks like a healthier version of herself. And she's currently balancing uh, like a, sh a shit ton of supplies, uh, like in both of her arms. Uh, some of it's like mashed up into the side of her face. And I think she has, they have a, like, I think Jackie and Harvey have established a secret knock. Uh, Great. When, Love some, it. when somebody leaves, somebody is usually staying behind if they're making supply runs. Um, there's, you, you don't want to chance keys because, I mean, it's a safe house that's still technically in operation. It, somebody else could come in through that door. Yep, for sure. Cool. Um, so... A feral cat to domesticated, <laughs> sleek panther pipeline. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Uh, so you do your... Uh, you do your, your little secret knock... Uh, on on the apartment, um, and the door opens, and there is Harvey Dent. Um, he is wearing a uh, a collared shirt with the uh, the sleeves rolled up, um, and maybe just one too many buttons undone. Um, he has a kitchen towel thrown over one shoulder, um, and. Uh, you uh, you can see uh, that he has in in the other hand um, a uh, a pan uh, where uh, he has been flipping silver dollar pancakes. <laughs> Go directly to jail for that pun. You were waiting for that. <laughs> uh, 
Um, yeah, Jackie kind of bustles in being like, oh, hey, uh, let me put this down. One second, I had to carry this all the way up. Oh, hey, uh, let me let me let me get that. Let me get that. No, I, I got it. I got it. I got it. Um, if he takes it, uh, he's going to see that one half of her face has a new bruise on it. OK, uh, so he he sort of he sort of grabs part of the, the package and he's putting down the, the pan on the, the hot plate in the, the little kitchen area uh, with the other hand uh, and uh He's, uh, you know, he sort of puts it down and then with that hand kind of like brushes your hair aside to, to the bruise. <sighs> You've been going hard on these supply runs, Jack. And look, I'm just doing the best I can. You should see the other guy. Uh, she goes over to the sink uh, to wipe off some of the blood that's on her knuckles really quickly. Yeah, I, I'll pass. I don't know where you're getting this stuff. Uh, and he's he's starting to like, un it's a, is it in like a bag? Yeah, she's got it in a bag. Yeah, It's kind of just overflowing out of it. It's just like supplies for the apartment, uh, some food, mm -hmm. uh, like med medication, like Advil, Tylenol, stuff like, like you know, sundries. Yeah, so he, he's starting to kind of unpack that onto the, the counter uh, on the... Um, on the the side here, and uh, well, just take care of yourself out there, Jackie. I listen. It's great that you're getting this stuff, and uh, God knows we need it. As he holds like a like a, a can of beans or something. Uh, but hey, we've been fine so far. Yeah. And yeah, and uh, uh, we we've, we've been fine. I'm not going to I listen, I said I wasn't going to ask and I'm not going to ask. You come in with the stuff. We're good. You come home safe. We're good. But every once in a while, it's just you, you know, you get a shiner on you like that and it, it worries me. And uh I appreciate that. She kisses his cheek. But I'm really okay. All right. I believe and, you. uh, look, I'm not really hurting anybody that much. And I'm not just saying that to downplay things. I really mean it. It's get in, get out. Get the stuff and get going. I'm trying not to make a scene. You know, but at some point, we're going to have to figure out, you know, what we're doing. He looks you, like, very sincerely in the in the eyes and says... I believe you. Thanks. So is this for, for me? She's gesturing to the food because I'm starving. Yeah, I, I made breakfast. <laughs> uh, and oh, oh shoot. Uh, and he, he put it back on the hot plate and the, the pancake is starting to smoke a little bit. So he, he grabs it out and like quickly flips it onto a, a paper plate. You're adorable. Prime. Crime, David. Hateful. <laughs> Hateful. Unbelievable. <laughs> canceled. You are canceled for this. Uh, yeah. Um, Jackie doesn't care. Breakfast. It's served. Thanks. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is a routine that they've established, but every time it happens, it's to Jackie, it's new. Like every time. Like the novelty just not wearing off on this. Um, she looks happy. Um, so she, she's, she tucks in being so today, what do we got? Uh, where do you go to eat in this, in this space? I mean, there's probably enough room for like a tiny kitchen table. It's a regular apartment. It's just small. Yeah. Okay, cool. So there, there's like a, there's like a card table maybe. Uh, yeah. that the that the two of you are sitting sitting down at um the irony of the fact that they've probably shared this space before but not like this is not lost yeah yeah for sure um so uh harvey says um well um i i got my uh i got my appointment later with the doctor that's good yeah i forgot that that was today uh what jackie 
is the name of the therapist who you found for Harvey. I wonder if I can get away with the actual canon therapist because that's what's in my head because it's such a good name. Let's do it. It's just... Dr. Annabelle Mead. Dr. Annabelle Mead. That's great. All right. Um, yeah, so uh, so Harvey says, yeah, um, you know, uh, Dr. Mead said I, I was making progress last time. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, great. That's great. Y you can say fuck, Jackie. It's <laughs> just the two of us alone. Yeah, I'm just trying. In an apartment. It's a, it's a personal thing. Come on. All right. Um, yeah, sure. Self-improvement. Great. <laughs> you're, you're, you're doing awesome. That's the... You know, I occasionally beat people up and take this stuff, but I'm trying to cut down on how much I swear. We're all oh, working on things. Okay, so you go out there and you're polite about it. You, you sort of... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, hey, you, everyone's you beat the shit out of them and then you say please and thank you now. Yeah, exactly. I say, you know, please... Um, let's make this quick and then thanks when, you know, I slam them into a wall. I think it's working out for me really well. She's got like a pancake hanging off of like a fork because she's gesturing about this. Great, great. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna tell Dr. Mead about this one. This, I'm gonna have to work through this a okay. little bit, I think. Listen, um, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how you located her or how you're convincing her to to see me and and stay quiet about it but um it's it's helping it really is good um i i'm glad i'm really glad and hey i i said i'd find you a doctor yeah um i'm what did you think i meant by that a vet i <sighs> I'm sorry if I if I doubted you. Come on. It's all fine. Um there there is something that I, I wanted to talk to you about though, that that she and I were were talking about last time. Um, uh oh, should I be nervous? I, and I sure I'm sure it's gonna come up again. No, I don't I don't think so. Um you know uh uh, Dr. Mead, as we get closer and closer to actually letting her talk to him, um, if we're, we're, we're going to get there, we're going to get there. Yeah. And, but it's at your time. Right. And, and she's saying what I really need to do that is stability, you know, uh, a, yeah. a permanent place to stay, uh, heat, water, electricity that's not, you know, siphoned off from the neighbors. Uh, I did do a good job of that, though. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying you didn't, um, but we need something that's a little less. I know. Temporary. And. That that it's gonna cost money. We need something that's permanent. We need something that's not temporary. Okay. Yeah, we do. <laughs> we do. Sorry. Yes. Uh, yes, that's important. A place. Um, yeah, I know he, that he he understands what you're what you're kind of getting at here. And yeah, you know the the cartoon heart bubbles are becoming visible. Yeah, he he <laughs> gives you he gives you kind of a, a uh, he gives you kind of a a small smile and, and kind <laughs> of like you know uh, just gently reaches his hand across the table and, and puts it on yours. I will protect them with my life. <laughs> I'm freaking. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, uh, it's not my first time, you know, being on the run, obviously, but, uh, I don't, I don't know how to get that here. I mean, yeah, the money obviously would, would help a lot, but 
I mean, short of us walking into the precinct and asking, please, pretty please, don't arrest us. We're doing better. You just got to believe us. I don't know what else we can do. Yeah. It's, um, we're in a tight spot. And, you know, the last thing that I want to do is, is go back to the gang. No, um, I don't want you to do that either. They... I'll think of something. Yeah, they, they'd help us, but I can't risk it. He wants me to. And I, I'm sure okay, well, as hell you, not gonna let him. You tell him that that's the easy way out. We've been working hard on not taking that. Both of us. I know he can hear me. Yeah, yeah, he can he can hear you. Good. Look, this I mean, I, I I can see about no one's gonna hire me to do shit, but I can figure out how to get money. But it's not gonna be a great way to get it. At this point. We got to do what we got to do. Okay. Um. Because I, you know, I, I, you've been working really hard, so I've been trying to not. I mean, this isn't a great example of it. She gestures to the bruise on her face, but. I haven't. I've, this is the longest I've ever gone without, you know. I don't want to ruin that. I know. But if it means a house or an apartment, fuck. Damn it. Shit. Ah. I've been <laughs> You're doing great at not swearing. <laughs> Thank you. You're doing really great. Uh, oh my and God. He, he reaches across the table uh, and kind of like brings your, your head in, <laughs> gives oh. you a kiss on the forehead, uh, which is uh, when your phone rings. Okay, hang on. Uh, who is it? It's Ed. Oh, it's Ed. It's Ed. Uh, I, I, I answer, hey, what's yeah. up? You, what's up? You, you good? What's going on? You um, called. I'm, I'm great. Um, oh, can you I say that again? Over. Can you say that one more time for me, Ed, and make me believe it? Can I come over? Now? Yes. I'm, um, I'm outside. Oh! Oh, <laughs> like right now. Uh, can you, hold please. Uh, I just pulled the phone away. Uh, it's, it's outside. It's outside. Um, he... That's not Harvey, good, is it? Harvey kind on of, scale looks, of one at, to ten? looks at his watch. Um... <sighs> Yeah, could go either way. Great. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, I'm gonna let him in, obviously. All right, I'm, 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 I'm letting you in. You're not, you're not busy. I can go to the, the. I can go across the street. No, There's no, a... no. Ed, Ed, get in here. I'm gonna unlock the door. All right. Uh, and Jackie, as you, um, as you hang up and, um. And go over to um, to unlock the door. Uh, Harvey starts, uh, you know, clearing the uh, the, the hey, paper stop that, stop that. You stuff. cooked. I'm gonna clean. That's how it works. Okay, okay. The Hands whole off. system we've got. Hands off. Listen, like you said, uh, I don't want to see the other guy, and I don't want to be the other guy. <laughs> um, and I mean, as... you can be the other guy for other reasons after I deal with this. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And as you really right in front of my sandwich. <laughs> uh and as you turn back to um to unlock the uh the door and let Ed in, Jackie. Yeah. Um where do you notice the note? What? That has been left for you. 
It's tucked somewhere. Uh, okay, if I'm going over to the door, um, the note is between a chest of drawers and the door. Cool. Just, I see it poking out. What the fuck? Okay. Damn it. So Shit. God. <laughs> and you pluck it out uh, as you're starting to undo the, the locks uh, and you, you just take a quick look at it. Quick glance. Um, give me a fortune roll. Everything was going so well. Five. Five. Okay. It was just a straight fortune roll, right? Nothing. Just a straight fortune roll. This was kind of a 50-50 a situation. Was it? Yeah. God, I hate could have gone Could have gone exactly one way or exactly the other. Um, so you, you take a glance at this note, uh, and it reads in, um, it's Harvey's hand, but it's a little shakier, a little more aggressive. Oh, God. And of course, you recognize whose handwriting this is. Uh huh. Um, and the note says, Make your move, or else I'm taking over. And that's where we're going to cut that scene. What was the bad version of that, David? I'll tell you, I'll tell you later. Ollie. Where have you been keeping Poison Ivy? Well, um, there is a remote little section of the yard that is um, kind of largely buried behind a semi-collapsed stack of, um, I'm going to say weirdly specifically gremlins. It's all gremlins. We love a it's gremlin like, on this show. I, and and we love gremlins. destroying them specifically. We do, we do. And then there's one Yugo right at the top, like a cherry <laughs> on a shit pile. Um, Great. <laughs> uh, but um, kind of half buried underneath that is a uh, Quonset style hanger. Um, a small one, uh, like that is functionally like maybe a three car garage. And uh, and I think after you go through a couple a uh, couple layers of um, of uh, like industrial flappy boys, yeah, vinyl stripping, yeah, um, it is bright as fuck in there. There are so many solar lamps and a ton of plants, and just generally, this has been turned into a little aggressive little grow house slash greenhouse. Cool, cool. So, um, yeah, the, uh, the last time, uh, of course, that we, uh, we, we saw everyone, um, Ivy had passed out after overexerting herself during your escape from the Joker, uh, and, um, the, uh, the car crash in the woods, um, you all made your way back to Catwoman's safe house loft where we saw Ed previously. Um, and Ivy had kind of been going in and out of consciousness there. So now you've sort of uh, set her up in a, in a more permanent spot um, in, in this, uh, this, this little, I don't know, what, what, what would you call it? Green, you said like greenhouse Quonset? Yeah, it's, uh, I mean... In the sketchiest, most OSHA violating offense against the word, it is technically a conservatory. Great. Yeah. So this this will be Ivy's conservatory in the in the corner of uh, of the yard, the uh, the junkyard that you uh, occasionally call home, uh, which we will get a bit more of an expansive view of later. I want you, Ollie, to make a fortune roll for me. And this is going to be with Ivy's level, which I believe is three, but I'm going to double check because I have all of this stuff 
down now. Um, yeah, level three. So you're making a fortune roll with three dice. Okay. I dislike that this is how we're starting off oh, my dice no, rolling. It's, it's chill. It's totally fine. Don't even worry about it. So six, four, three. Okay, six. Okay, suck it. Okay, so um, so with a six, um, uh, I think Ivy has uh, actually been been doing well. She she is sort of recovered. Um, which is to say she's, she's up and about, um, but she is still not back to, to, to where she was. Um, very specifically, um, her plant powers are essentially blocked and, and have been since she, she kind of like fully came back to consciousness and, and woke up. Um, uh, a situation which she finds extremely frustrating. So I think where we join the two of you is, um, is with, uh, with Ollie and Ivy in the, uh, in the makeshift conservatory, um, and, and Ivy kind of, uh, uh, frustratedly stalking back and forth, um, so Ali, who do we see? Um, who do we see in the room with poison ivy here? Let's get a physical description of Ollie. And um, I also want to know um, what you are doing for Ivy uh, in this moment. Like, what what have you have you brought her something? Are you just keeping her company today? Um, are you trying to treat her in some way? I think that, uh, so yeah, we see, um, I think we see, uh, kind of sitting hunched forward, um, just kind of watching Ivy pace back and forth. We, uh, the camera pans, um, across some, at this point, extremely faded mop of like poorly, uh, poorly dyed, uh, hair, um, this, uh, kind of faux hawk, um, uh, a patched up leather vest, a black hoodie, torn up jeans, boots, uh, a, a figure that is kind of uh, sh scrappy, uh, very stringy looking, um, a lot of muscle, a lot of raw boned energy that, and uh, clearly just, um, I think we, the camera pans around and we see Ollie. Ollie's got, um, Kind of uh, square features, um, semi androgynous. Uh, they're wearing um, they're wearing like the most aggressive sunglasses you've ever seen. Um, it like it, it, it if you look if you looked very 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 closely through the lens, you could see that there is a second pair of sunglasses underneath <laughs> those sunglasses because it is so bright in here. They have um, they have uh, clip on sunglasses clipped onto their sunglasses. Onto the sunglasses. Yeah, yeah, that is what is going on here. Um, and uh, yeah, just uh, uh, there's uh, kind of anywhere there's exposed skin, there's hints of. Uh, black and green tattoos um all sorts of different various uh little bits a lot of a lot of crawling plant work um leaves poking out here and there um and uh i i think they're just kind of holding this um this it, it looks just like a ziploc sandwich bag full of um what appears to be some sort of uh some sort of kind of coarse brown substance okay uh, it's kind of organic cool so uh yeah i ivy is sort of agitatedly uh pacing back and forth in front of you um you know we we see uh, we see this uh this woman with with red hair and and green skin though i think the green uh, has sort of, um, it's kind of faded back, 
uh, you know, it's it's a it's sort of uh, dull. It's it's not that like bright, healthy, uh, healthy plant green. It, it's sort of that like, um, oh, this this plant is sad and needs water and sun. Kind of kind of a green. Um, if you were like, if you were to just sort of glance at her on the street, you might not even realize that she uh that that she does not have uh a a something within the normal range of human skin tone right um and uh, i think she's dressed uh pretty pretty schlubbily uh she's got like uh a a um M shorts yeah <laughs> she let's say she has like um I, I want to say I don't know. Let's it's sweatpants. She she's wearing sweats, so she's wearing like sweatpants, and she's wearing like a uh, like a, a Gotham U hoodie, right? Um, and uh, uh, you, you know may, maybe maybe she's maybe she's out of boredom, like cropped it a little for 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 a little bit of flair, but this is this is Ivy casual. Uh, with a capital C, uh, and uh, she she's just sort of like just sort of like going off um, uh, in your in your general f- vicinity, Ollie. Um, this is ridiculous. I no matter how much sunlight I get, I can't feel it on my skin. I feel dried up, and uh, my chlorophyll isn't working. I'm not getting anything from this. I can't hear the plants in here, Ollie. I, and she, she sort of, uh, uh, frustratedly like rubs, you know, there's in, in a, I I think you filled this space with plants, right? Um, so there's, there's all kinds of different, uh, all, all kinds of different plants in here. Um, and she, she sort of rubs the, one of them. It's just a leaf. I can't talk to them anymore. I don't know what they did to me. I don't know either, boss. It's whatever it was. I, I've tried to find out. I've asked my contacts. Nobody knows who was even running that. There, there's just, there's got to be some sort of lead. There's got to be some way to, to figure it out. Those Arkham butchers ruined me. And she sort of slumps down on like a, there's like a plastic monoblock chair uh, in the, in the corner. Um, I think Ollie stands up and takes their turn pacing around, um, there's, there's gonna be an answer. We're, we're gonna figure it out. Like, they, they can't have just warped whatever makes you, you away. Like, it's gotta be some sort of suppressant or some sort of, uh, introduced deficiency or something. Like, maybe this, this, I, I, uh, I got this from a friend of a friend and who got it and by trade it, it's lo- <clears throat> chain of events this is a microcorrhizae they use at the death garden over in the UK like but it's supposed to work really well for chlorotic deficiencies and toxic plants <sighs> thanks I'll try it I think you gotta like put it in water and make like compost tea or something. Um, so I, I got you a bath bomb, and Ollie uh, chucks her the uh, um, the the sandwich baggie full of dirt. Yeah, she kind of clumsily catches it, um, and and, and sort of gives it a. Um, uh, I'll look over. It doesn't feel like anything. 
It should, it should feel like something. I should feel it breathing. I don't know. I know, boss. I know. We'll figure it out. Thanks, Nolly. You're... You're a little too good to me. I mean, like, bad minimum level at my job. Uh-huh. Does that mean I'm getting a raise? Uh, your job is driving. Or it was. Before all this. Raise? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, you uh, Ollie, would have sweetheart. to pay me for that to happen, but. Do I look like I've got any cash? I don't know. You're looking a little green to me. A little flush. That's not funny. It's a little funny. No. It's a little bit funny. She, she kind of sulks, uh, but you can see that she's trying to stifle. Uh, a, a smile. I'm gonna keep uh, shaking the bushes and rattling whatever cages I find. And we'll, if we can find out who did it, then we can find them. And then we can start breaking things until they tell us how to fix it. <sighs> That's my driver. Yeah, you know, driving. It's, uh... It's gonna be okay, boss. I promise. Uh, and that, Ollie, is when you get a text on the, uh... the burner phone that you've got. You gonna check it? You can just leave it if you want. I'm sure it's not important. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I have something for this. <laughs> we'll, we'll hold. Not, not we'll plot hold. relevant at all. I have something hold for this. Us. I don't have something for this. Hey, no, but if you if you if you don't answer, I mean, we can all continue on with our lives. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fine. I'll, I'll we'll just yeah, see you next pulls, season. Ollie pulls like an old Nokia out of uh, the pocket. And, Great. Uh... Um, you have a text on uh, on the phone. Um, the it, it is just a name and address. It reads Rebecca Pham, fifteen sixty eight Haugen Avenue, apartment six F. So, Ollie, my question is, who did you ask to? get you the home address of one of the guards monitoring Ivy in Arkham. And what did you have to do or give or promise in exchange for this information? Ooh. I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a do a fortune roll for myself. Cool. I'm using the result. Right then. Um, I think Ollie specifically um, asked the Meg. Perfect. You sure and, did. And uh but part of the chain of connections involves, I think they had to do something uh, a, a wee bit fucked up. Uh, probably involving like uh, some light fire bombing of some something. Some light fire bombing. Just the, you know, some recreational <laughs> arson. Okay. Um, and I... I mean, I feel like, uh, unless you would like to, um, 
uh, unless you would like to determine differently. Well, it have did you do it yet, or were you waiting for the information in order to, uh, in order to firebomb the uh, the target that the Meg set for you? I think, uh, based on my role, I think it's already been done. Okay. Or cool. oh no, it's already been the firebomb itself's already been planted. It's been planted, but it hasn't gone off yet. And so Ollie's going to pull out a different phone. And just scroll down. like, uh, And by scroll, I mean click manual buttons. I think this is like an old shitty Blackberry. Yeah. Just click, 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 click. And then hit send. All right. And... Uh... You know, a few minutes later, somewhere in the city, we hear the sound of sirens and we see smoke rising. Ali, we will leave you for the moment, uh, replacing that Blackberry um, in your pocket uh, and, and looking down at that address and name that you got from the mag and contemplating your next move which is where we're going to leave it so that has been episode one of our new season of streets of gotham thanks everybody for joining us here on manapot studios for streets of gotham uh, Streets of Gotham runs Mondays at 8 p.m. Eastern. We're also uh, on YouTube, youtube.com slash Manapot Studios, where you can watch uh, past games, including our entire first season. Uh, catch up there. Once again, I've been David. You can check out my tabletop RPGs over at dbb-8.itch.io, including In the Dark, uh, the simplified multi-setting version of Blades in the Dark that we've been playing this evening. I'm also on Instagram, Mastodon, Hive, uh, socials in general, at Brunel Brutman. And with that, I will have our cast give their plugs and shoutouts. Hey, everybody. My name is Andre Rivera. You can find me at Andre Rivera Art on Twitter and Instagram. You can also find me at my professional portfolio website, AndreRivera.art. You can see my illustrations, as well as all of the actual plays that I'm in including The Atomist, Tragedy Theologian, Redline, Unicorn Hunt, Power Rangers, a uh, whole bunch of cool stuff, and also uh, games that I've designed, including some that are coming up the pipe. So keep an eye out for those. And that's it. I am no longer Ed. I am Maddie. I'm inhabiting Maddie. I am a spirit. Um, I use they, them pronouns. Just a reminder, um, you can find me um, at on Instagram um, at Sellertator, or you can find me on my website, uh, maddiecourtney.com. That's M-A-T-T-I-E, 1-800-MADDIE.COM. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah. Hey, still me, still Hopper. Sorry about that. Um... My pronouns are they, them, and if you want more of my bullshit, you can find me online under Fail Deadly, that is with a three instead of an E, or under the Legend Tree. Um, I stream stuff sometimes on my Twitch channel, and it's usually delightfully fucked up. Um, I RPGs. I stream RPGs and occasionally Gloomhaven with much cooler people than me. Um, I am also a cast member on Hole in the World, a the award-winning podcast, along with, uh, I don't know where you're going to be on screen, so I'm just going to wildly, eh, along with Marcy, um, also here on Manapod Studios, and uh, usually on Flights of Fandom, um, a lot. I don't know when this is airing, but if it's in February, you should come check out the, the Fast and the Furious flight that I will be running. It's going to be a crime. Hello, um, I remain uh, Marcy, aka Experimental Madness. 
I'm still a writer, I'm still an editor, and I still play awesome games with awesome people. I will be thinking about Domestic Harvey for the next calendar year. Uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, the perpetual cringy 13 year old fangirl that inhabits my being and refuses to die is having a great time. Uh, <laughs> everyone covered a lot of uh, standard plugs. Uh, you can typically find me right here on Manipod Studios doing way too many things at the same time. Uh, I am also in Hole in the World every other Sunday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern time. We are coming back from our hiatus soon. Uh, we might already be back. Who knows? I'm speaking to you from the past, but this is airing in the future. It's very fun for me to do mental math like this. Um, and as Hopper said, we are doing our Flights of Fandom uh, for the month of February is Fast and Furious. Uh, and I will, I will be and currently am ooh, in this monstrosity. Uh, tune in, continue to tune in. Oh, the Matrix, time is weird. Anyway, stuff, so many things. Uh, watch YouTube, watch this channel. We get more unhinged as time goes on. So with that, <laughs> we'll call it for tonight. And we'll see you next time here on Streets of Gotham. <laughs>